Hey, <laughs> I got choked. Hey, good morning. This is Jim from The Swing. <laughs> I just, uh, you caught me uh, having a cup of coffee. You know what this says right here? It says, I love you, a bushel and a peck, and a hug around the neck. Now, I used to say that to, to Diane. I said, Mom, as I was a kid, used to sing that I love you, a bushel and a peck, a bushel and a peck, and a hug around the neck. <laughs> One day she came home with this cup. Now I drink coffee out of the cup, and I'm reminded that, that not only did my mom love me, but I have a wife that loves me and can give me a hug around the neck every once in a while. Well, quite often. <laughs> hey, this is about the, our, our devotion. So, um, hey, we've been talking about, of course, going through the story of faith with Abraham and Isaac and, and Jacob. And last uh, yesterday, last time we were together, we were talking about how the fact that even, even though Jacob wasn't um, a real testifier. Uh, he wasn't one that would get in your face and say, get right with God or get left. He, he, he uh, was going through his own journey of maturity, um, and yet he was with Laban, and Laban was a, a trickster amongst tricksters. He was, he was uh, you know, if Jacob was a deceiver, Laban was on steroids. So we talked about that. So, But Laban came to the point, and remember when we talked about Laban came to him, he says, says, uh, if I have found favor in your eyes, for I have learned by experience. A man with an experience is never at the mercy of a man with an argument. So he says, I've learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me through you. You know, he recognized the fact, even though Jacob, there was something about Jacob that was different. And that because of that, he had been blessed. And then we, and then we talked about how that, that Jacob said to him, it's time for me to, uh, to, to, to have my own stuff. I've worked for you a long time. And so we talked about how that they worked up the, got the sheep, you know, some spot and whatever. And then it says, we, the last thing we said, the last time we were together was, thus the man became, Jacob, became exceedingly prosperous had large flocks of females, male servants, camels, and donkeys. So he was very, very blessed. Well, now we go into chapter 31 of Genesis. Genesis, the 31st chapter. And this is where it tells the story of how Jacob is warned of God, to, or, or told of God, to go back to his homeland. Now it's time. Now, you have to realize that Jacob's been there 20 years. He's been there 20 years. He's worked for Laban very faithfully. He, he, and we'll learn later that, that he, he told Laban, he said, I've done all this for you. And, and I've even, well, we'll get there. He said, I, I've even, uh, when people stole your stuff, I, I, I made up for it myself. When, when they got killed, I made up for it myself. But all of a sudden, Jacob says in chapter 31, that first first chapter, or first verse, he said, Jacob uh, looked into the countenance of, of Laban, and he saw, he said, and Jacob saw the countenance of Laban was indeed not favorable. So he began, he began to uh, see the fact that, that he's working with Laban, and Laban's he just didn't feel the favor of Laban on him anymore. So, said so the Lord said, this is verse 3, The Lord said unto Jacob, Return to the land of the fathers and to your family, and I will be with you. Boy, he hears it again. Remember that first time he said, uh, when he was at Bethel, he said, I'll be with you. And, he, and here again, he reminds him, he said, I want you to go back. Now, be, be, be sure you remember that what he goes back to is he feels like that his brother's back there just getting ready with everything he has when he gets back to kill him because he said I was going to as soon as my father our father dies so he said okay so Jacob sent and called for Rachel and Leah to the field and to the flocks and he said I see your father's countenance it's not favorable toward me as before but God my father has been with me and uh, he tells me that we need to go home so and they agreed with him so in verse 17 it says that then Jacob rose and set his sons and his wives on camels <laughs> Uh, <laughs> set him on camels and get, get ready to go for 500 miles. You think it's tougher than a minivan, you ought to get to do this on a camel. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, here he's got, he's got four women. <laughs> four women to go 500 miles on camels? I mean, I can't even imagine the shoes they had to put. Where did they put all the shoes for the four women? <laughs> and they got diapers and, and they got toys and all the stuff and the snacks. How in the world were they going to go four or five hundred miles and they said well, I, well I, I guess they were used to it camels so they got on the camels and they took off and he carried away all the livestock and the possessions which he had gained and acquired livestock which he had gained and uh, and uh, and he went to his father uh, uh, Isaac 
in the land of Canaan or Israel. Now Laban was gone out and he was shearing the sheep and <laughs> um, Rachel, while he was gone, now look, if you, Rachel had not been anywhere uh, except there. And you know what? When she realized he was going to take and go for 500 miles, probably never come back, she wanted to take something with her that um, would remind her of home. Well, you know what she did? She took uh, her father's personal gods. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. Can you believe it? If you, somebody could take your God like that, it's not a very big God, is he? <laughs> I hope you don't have a God that somebody can just take away from you like that. Hey, we'll talk about this tomorrow. See ya. God bless. <laughs>